Hello everyone, welcome back to our video class. Today we are talking statistics and we are going to be looking at how to draw and use a pie chart. So our objectives are to draw a pie chart and secondly we're going to use the pie chart to answer some questions. So first up, to mention a pie chart is a circular graph that is used to show how different um, parts of a whole compare to each other using sectors of the circle. So each sector is given a particular angle. A pie chart, being a circular graph, uses has 360 degrees and that 360 degrees is shared up among all the parts. And so you can look at it and easily see how each part compares to the other ones. And so in this question, it's a past question from CSEC, and it talks about the career choices of grade five students. We can see the number that um, the number of persons who chose the different career paths. So a salesperson has 330, an artist 216, lawyer 240. And the total number of persons who were surveyed was 1,080. We are told to find the missing value T. This is a simple calculation here because we can just add these numbers and subtract it from 1,080 and we get our answer. So let's find the value of T. So to find our T, we simply go by adding those numbers 240 plus 189 plus t plus 216 plus 330 and that gives us 1080 and adding that up gives us 975 plus t and that is 1080 and we therefore get t to be equal to 1080 minus 975 and we're done t is 105. So 105 persons here. To draw our pie chart now, we need to work out the angles that each of these will take up out of the 360 degrees. To do that, we write each number as a fraction of the total, 1080. So we'd write 240 um, as a fraction of 1080 and multiply that by 360 degrees which is the number of degrees in the circle. Once you do that, using a calculator or other calculation, you get 80 degrees. So we're writing that 80 degrees here for this one. 189 over 1080 times 360 again. Go ahead and use your calculator to do that. And that will give you 63 degrees. So we have 63 degrees here. To finish it with the others, we simply do the same thing, 105 over 1080 times 360 degrees. And doing that gives you 35 degrees. So this one would be 35 degrees. And in doing the others, 216 gives 72 degrees and 330 will give you 110 um, degrees. So each of these, that is the amount of degrees they will take up out of the 360. And what we're going to do now is to draw the pie chart to show each of these on, 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 on the diagram and how they compare to each other. The question says we are to use a four centimeter radius um, due to how small a four centimeter radius is. I'll be using a slightly bigger radius just to make sure that everybody can see uh, clearly. To draw a pie chart, you will need two things. You will need a uh, you need um, a protractor and you need a compass. The compass will tell you how big your circle is. CXE in that question said four centimeters. Um, when a question says to use four centimeters, you shouldn't go use five or six because in doing that, CXE may be testing to see if you actually know how to use your protractor to draw a four centimeter circle. So there may be a mark for that in the question which you don't want to use, which you don't want to lose, sorry. So here we go, we're going to draw our circle. Um, this is our circle here. All right, now that we have our circle, we're going to use our protractor to measure the angles. And in using your protractor when setting it up, you need to make sure that the cross here in the middle here, there's a small cross here. That one, you need to make sure that it aligns perfectly with the center of your circle. If you don't do that, then you are likely to draw your angles incorrectly. So make sure that it lines up lining it up here on mine um 
Here we go. Looks a bit slightly off, but let's just work with it as it is. All right, so here, I just made that a little bigger so we can see it. And so now we're gonna put in each of these angles. First, I'm gonna draw a line um, from here to our circumference and then measure each of the angles. So this sector for lawyer, it has a 80 degrees. I'm just going to make a mark, 80 degrees here. And the other is 63 degrees. So counting 63 degrees from here gives me 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61, 62, 63. Remember that a, a, a protractor has two sets of numbers one counting left to right and one counting right to left. So depending on where your angle is measured or where you're counting from, then you move your um, your protractor and your count. So let's move it to the first one. Here we have, here. Okay, here's our first one and that's 63 degrees. So we put in our 63 degrees. All right, now we're going to move this um, protractor around to the other one. And I'm seeing already that my diagram is a little bit off. So I'm going to adjust this to make sure that it, it looks a little neater. All right, here, here it is. And now I'm going to put in my line. All your line should meet at the center when you do it properly. Um, next. We have 36, 72, and 110. So I'm going to mark in the 36, 10, 20, 30, 35, 36, 36 degrees. And 36 and 72 make 108. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark 108 for the other one. All right. So now I'm going to rotate my protractor here and draw in the additional lines. And this line from here to the center. Okay. There's a little bit of, um, let me just fix this a little bit so that we get it looking a little better. All right, there we go. So, okay. Draw in the line for that one. Here we go. It's a better line. Um, it's a little bit off, but using yours on your on your book between we have a little bit more control hopefully it will come out a little bit better than that one and the last one here that we're drawing has 105 so join in the line here there we go all right and this will give us our protractor not the neatest of um our pie chart not the neatest but you get the idea of, of what we did so for the first one was the lawyer um, and this one was the 80 degrees and the teacher and this was 63 degrees the doctor and um, that was 36 degrees so we're labeling our pie chart artist um, 72 degrees and the final one salesperson is 110 degrees. You should always make sure that you label your pie chart whenever you draw one so that the person looking at looking at it can know exactly what you did and to make sure that um, you know exactly what you did. So here we have our pie chart. This is how you draw it with your compass and using your protractor to go around the circle and measure each one. Now that we've drawn it, we're going to look at how to use a, a pie chart to answer some questions. So here our next question shows a pie chart already drawn. And it says a post office um, dealt with 720 letters in a week. They were sorted into first class, second class, and airmail. And the pie chart shows a different number of each type. So 175 degrees to mean to represent the second class, 160 for first class, and 25 degrees for email to find out each to find out the number of degree of letters for each one since each of these is a 
fraction of the 360, then we take them one by one. So air mail would be 25 degrees out of 360 degrees, and we times that by the number of letters handled. And so this comes out easy for us. So we end up with um, 50 letters here. Um, for the second one, which is um, second class, um, it's now going to be 175 over 360 times 720 letters. And that gives us the same idea that we have 175 times times two. And that gives us 350. And the final one, we realize we can simply multiply the 160 by two, and that gives us 320 for first class. So we can use our pie chart to answer questions like these by going through, by using each degree and measuring and comparing it to the number of letters, for example, in this question. There will be also questions that you will see in your multiple choice exam, such as these. So for example, here, a pie chart shows the preference in drinks in a group of students. So say 12 students prefer chocolate. Um, then what is the total number of students? So here we have pineapple juice, orange juice, chocolate, and milk. And it says that um, 12 students prefer chocolate. So if 12 students prefer chocolate, then look at the the angle for chocolate. So notice that this is a diameter, goes right across the circle here. This is a 120 degree, which would make this right here a 60 degree angle. So for a 60 degree angle, it's, it's um, um, approximate to 12 students. So that would mean that if 60 degrees represent 12 students and 120 degrees, which is two times 60, would be two times 12 students, which would be 24 students. And that would mean now that the entire half of this circle would be 24 plus 12, that's 36. So half of the circle represents 36 students. So the whole diagram then would represent um, 72. So that would be our answer, that the whole thing represents 72 students here again. Um, in this question, we have 160 boys represented in a survey, and we can see boxing, tennis, cricket, swimming, and football. That's the number of persons who participated in each. The, the question is asking about the number of persons who participated in football. Um, so football is this angle, and this angle is a quarter of the circle. So a quarter of 160 would be simply that. And 4 into 16 here goes 4, so we know that the answer there is, is 40. But if you wanted to look at others, for example, then boxing, which is 45 degrees, which would be a half of 90, would be, since the, all of this section, which is a quarter, is 40, um, then here would be 20, here would be 20. And this, and this angle here is equal to this one, should also be 20. And so we could also find cricket if you wanted to, because the entire area of half of the circle would represent 80. And so this section would be 60. So we could go through and find out what each one is. In terms of this question though, persons who chose football, it's a quarter of the circle and that is 40 boys. So that is how you draw a pie chart. That is how you use a pie chart in your CXE. Until next time, Thank you for watching and continue working hard on your exam.